Hello everybody. So uh, today, inshallah, I'm going to talk about if our theories of gravity as some kind of modification, modified gravity or extended gravity. Of course, when we talk about the modification on the gravity, the first uh, question will be arise, arise is about why do we need like, to modify the gravity? We have the general relativity. It's a strong, brilliant, elegant theory describe the gravity successfully and give us that some new vision about the gravity and as you know that's according to the Einstein gravity now the concept of the gravity replaced or the concept of the force as gravity uh, replaced by that relationship between the curvature and the energy at any time if we have in some place of space time we have in energy matter mass then this will make or will cause curvature in the space time and if we have any test particle moving with this within this space time will be affected by this curvature of the space time and we we'll follow the geodes about uh, the uh, the geodes within this space time and actually there is perfect matching between the general relativity predictions the theoretical predictions and the empirical or the theor uh, experimental observation by studying the solar system or the local experiment which uh, investigate try to investigate the validity of the general relativity so why do we need to modify the general relativity the first thing which I, I want to mention here we are talking about the modification of general relativity on the classical level we are not talking about the quantum gravity or um, you know that unification theory and so now the question will be more uh, more important because if you say that you want to talk about this uh, modification of the general relativity despite of the unification or you don't want to go to that uh, topic about the particle physics so now why really do we need this the answer of this question actually uh, of course there is there is many uh, uh, let's say many answers there is many answers about this question but let me focus on the on the answers related to our topics today, which is if our theories as modified the gravity. And for this type of mod of uh, theories, so if R here we are going to talk about the if R theories of gravity. Oh, I forget to share the screen here. So, okay, anyway, anyway, before sharing the screen, now what the motivation behind the FR theories of gravity? Let's say, or let's divide these motivations or the reason behind this uh, theory into two parts. The first one is the historical one. Actually, working on the FR theory is all as all of general relativity itself. It started around 1919 by Weyl theorem, where he added the quad quadratic terms to the uh, Herbert Einstein action. To understand this one, now let me use the blackboard and share the screen. Okay. So, about the motivation of FR theories. Actually, let's review quickly the first concepts of general relativity. As we know, as and as I mentioned, that we have that equation, Einstein equation, which which uh, they are the first equation which relate the curvature or the geometry of the surface time with the uh, with uh, the with, with with the matter or the energy by you know that. That's brilliant equation. That's uh, say that's r mu u minus one over two g mu u r equals here eight pi g over six c to the power four t mu u. This part is the momentum energy tensor represents the matter in the universe, and this part sometimes we call it as g mu u Einstein tensor represents the curvature of the space time or the geometry of the space time. Now, the conclusion of this equation, as we will see later, actually it comes from building the action. Here we have the action, and of course the action should contain two parts, one of them uh, uh, related to the, or represent the gravity, 
or the geometry of the space time, let's say it's better to represent the geometry of the space time because each time equations relate between these two concepts. And the second one related to the matter exists in the universe. And then by taking the variation of this matter, this uh, action as oscillator with respect to human, we will can find each time equations. Now about this part, which represents the geometry is, let's say, call it SG, or actually it's written uh, known as H, S, E, H, uh, Einstein helper action, which is given by one over two uh, K, the integral of, and this part just for, to cover the hybrid volume, the square root, the, the DD for X, the square root of minus G, where G is the determinant of uh, the metric tensor G in the I'm going to talk about, uh, faster, fastly about uh, these concepts of general relativity because I expect that anyone will follow something related to the theory by the general relativity, uh, relativity, uh, general relativity who should be familiar with the general relativity itself. And here then we have Ricci scalar. Why do we, uh, why did they uh, should use a Ricci scalar because you know that's we need here to, to represent the geometry of the space time. We need something to be scalar because we are dealing with the Einstein equation. Uh, we are dealing with the uh, action, and we need it to, of course, to represent the curvature and the geometry of the space time. And uh, any person who worked on the, in the field of uh, general relativity or has a basic course in general relativity, you know that's the simplest quantity which satisfies this property in the Ricci scalar. So they choose this one as the simplest case then, and we'll see this one in details from this action, in addition to this part of the action, uh, Einstein built uh, his equations, Einstein equations. But now let's back to the question about why do we, uh, or why did they use R or choose only R? Because this is the simplest case, then we have this, equation then uh, by testing this equation and looking at the results of this equation and comparing these results with the experimental results we found that's perfect matching between them so uh, now ancient equations they are working very well and they are built from the simplest case which is rich scalar so why do we need to modify or to destroy this simplicity and this simplicity give us as i mentioned perfect matching between these uh, theoretical and uh, experimental results. But this, the question, yeah, I'll leave. Ah, it seemed that I stopped sharing, but I didn't, I didn't stop the video. Okay, so I will not repeat uh, what I was talking about. So just I can know what I say to my daughter, because it's really my lovely daughter. And it's really my life in Arabic, which means uh, I think I told her, I, I told, I told, I say to her, Riyamri, it means in, in Arabic language, it means my life and yes my daughter she's uh, my life actually uh, okay so so here now rich scalar so from rich scalar we built or einstein built the einstein equations but the, the question still exists can we use for example higher order of r like uh, r if we add alpha r squared now from the um, theoretical uh, perspective, yes, we can, of course, why we cannot. Uh, if the terms here satisfy the covariance principle, they are scalar, so why we can use them and also they are represent the, the curvature. The curvature. Uh, so, and this is actually done by Whale around 1919 by adding the uh, quadratic term to the action. And the question can be open about, uh, or the possibility can be open about this R. So now we have function of R, R and R squared. So we can ask whether if we have something like FR, general function of R, and we can 
uh, by finding uh, different motivations to choose different function of this Ricci scalar to build a new theory of or, or modify the theory of the company. Of course, at that there is no need to make the things complicated because we have the simplest case containing R, we have brilliant equations, and these equations give us what we need. So why do we need to make the things complicated? But after that, actually, there is some 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 theories or some aspects which involve like these if our theories. Like for example, if you want to let's say in case of uh, uh, let me just remember give me just one second to remember here. Because this is something related to the theoretical one. Oh, actually, we can we can follow it from here. Now, please. Yes, I think this part here contains some historical revision. Briefly, brief introduction about this. Yeah, this is about about this whale tensor um, quadratic term, which uh, term quadratic in whale tensor was added, was added to Einstein to help Lagrangian later. If our gravity received the attention of many authors, including Eddington, Bach. Schrodinger and all of these scientists. In 1960 and 1970, it was found that the quadratic corrections to H that Herbert was were necessary to improve the renormalizability of general relativity. And 1980, quadratic corrections were found to fuel inflation without need to scalar theory. Inflation, it's uh, an early st stage of the universe where we have that accelerated expansion of the universe. And actually, uh, uh, the new models of the inflation, all of them they are, they are using uh, or they used uh, scalar field to uh, add some kind of matter which can give us uh, negative pressure and cause the accelerated expansion of the universe by, with you, by using the FR theory. And this is one of the, the, that will be the topic of one of our lectures in the series about uh, the FR theories of gravity. Um, they found that we, by using or by using these FR theories of gravity, we can, uh, or, or the inflation can be driven without need, uh, any needs to uh, scale our theory. And here also they mentioned that nonlinear corrections are also motivated by string theory. And here there is for this reference 15, this one for historical revision about the FR theories. Okay, so this is about the historical motivation about the FR theories, but actually there is another thing related to the needs for FR theories. Now, let me talk a little bit about what if we apply the general relativity uh, or cosmological results of general relativity. What if we apply the general relativity to the universe and we take into account the cosmological principles and the matter of the universe and we apply the general relativity on them, actually, if we apply the general relativity on the universe, we'll find the following. So when you apply the general relativity on the universe within the field of uh, cosmology, we will find that the universe undergoes expansion. So we have cosmic expansion. And experimentally, this is uh, tested by looking at the redshift. Uh, but this cosmic expansion, actually, it's deaccelerated. It means that the, the cosmic accelerate uh, expansion uh, stated by the scale factor AT. So we are that so if we have dots in it to dots in the space time, there is expansion between them. And this uh, represents by the cosmic uh, scale factor AT. But the acceleration of this scale factor is smaller than zero. So the universe undergoes expansion, but this expansion, the rate, uh, 
of changing this expansion is uh, stored within the time. The acceleration is negative for this expansion. Now, at the days of that general relativity and according to the experimental abilities and equipments, they found that's okay, there is nothing. They, they couldn't actually they, um, check this AT, uh, A dot dot T, so everything was okay, but days after days, and when the, we have when the, uh, when we, when the community, the scientific community, they have the ability to test the far objects like the supernova and make um, experimental testing of that far objects. They found that this acceleration actually is not negative. They found that the acceleration here a dot dot t should be larger than zero. So it's accelerated expansion of the universe. So we have some kind of late accelerated expansion of the universe. Of course, this late accelerated ex uh, of, uh, expansion of the universe, why, why we say late because we discovered that we have now accelerated expansion of the universe, but we cannot say actually that uh, the universe undergo this accelerated expansion from the beginning until now because that, that will destroy the, the ability to have the large structure of the universe as we can see it today. The universe should uh, have uh, some kind of phase transition. So at first we have this inflation, which is accelerated phase of the expansion. Then we have the accelerated phase of expansion and this is necessary for many aspects and for the large structure, structure forming. Uh, and after that we have this late accelerated expansion of the universe. Now, the explaining of the state accelerated expansion of the universe, there is three, mainly, there is three different ways to explain this one. The first one by um, assuming the cosmological constant. It's, as you know, that cosmological constant started as a mistake by Albert Einstein, but then by using this mistake and by introducing this cosmological constant, we can achieve a, a late accelerated expansion of the universe. But actually this one, it's not, you know, it's uh, some kind, it's not preferred by the physicists because of many uh, aspects, one of them is that's that big uh, difference between the value of this cosmological constant according to the cosmology and the late accelerated expansion of the universe and the value of this cosmological constant calculated by the value. Now, the second possibility it has to assume that there is some kind of unknown form of energy, which is called the dark energy. As, and, and there is many models about this dark energy, the first one from a, another, like a quintessence, case sense, uh, um, holographic, I think, uh, quintessence. And, and each one of these models, of course, can give us the ability for rate accelerated expansion of the universe, but at the end, we assume some kind of unknown form of energy. We have no uh, observational test or observational uh, detecting of this energy. It just uh, until now, it's hy hypothetical one. Uh, but the third possibility now, it's just about this FRT of the gravity, because if we want to be fair enough, that we should think about, okay, what's the thing which give us in that the acceleration should be negative, the acceleration of this cosmic expansion. It's general relativity, so what if, the general relativity itself, it was incorrect. I'm not, of course, we are not meaning here that it's incorrect, that we should leave the whole concept of the general relativity and we can't leave the, the, the relation between the curvature and the matter. No, of course, it's, this is not what I'm trying to say here. But what if we need to modify the general relativity to achieve on the larger scale, to achieve on the low curvature scale that the expansion is accelerated? Of course, any modification of the general relativity, and this is one of the things which we will talk about them uh, in the third lecture of this lecture, that uh, this, this modified gravity should satisfy many aspects, like, for example, the Newtonian limit. At the end, like general relativity, we should achieve the Newtonian limit or post-Newtonian limit uh, approximation. 
and also the general relativity uh, achieved uh, matching, as I mentioned before, the theoretical complexion and experimental one with related to the solar system. So we need the modified development to achieve these things. Cauchy problems, yes, which we need that to avoid this problem. Uh, and actually, there is another prediction, uh, another another constraint on any uh, modified FR theory or any modified the gravity, by the way, not only FR theory of the gravity. And that will be the topic for, for later. So, the third possibility, and this is our topic for uh, today, it's about modify gravity. And after that, the physicists give attention to FR theories of the gravity as the first modification of FR theories. Some, some you know, uh, authors, they say or they find that this FR theories, it cannot be considered uh, more than as toys models, toy models of the gravity, because we have many, many, you know, uh, many modification of the gravity, and we cannot, and, and not only one model of uh, this FR theories can achieve the cosmic, uh, the late accelerated expansion of the universe. We have many of them, because we have FR general function, and you can build any function, then test this function, so if you have, if you don't have the strong motivation behind these models, it will be like it's some kind of mathematical tricks to solve the problem of the general relativity. So we cannot judge whether which model of these models is the final one and which give us the answer, the final answer about the late accelerated expansion of the universe. But uh, the main idea of this model that they give us and proof and they give us direct let's say direct hint that we can modify general relativity general relativity can be modified uh, to give us these uh, results okay now let's talk about within this lecture actually the main topic will be about uh, discussing the mathematical structure of this fr theory so let's just start talking about the general relativity itself, then I will talk about the FR theories of gravity. So let's start by general relativity. As I mentioned, that's S, the action, and I'm going to uh, call this one as S metric. I will tell you why I call this one as S metric. Equals S of the geometry, or now we have we call it as Einstein or Helper Einstein action plus S of the map. Now this S of Einstein Herbert d four x and you have the square root of minus g. We have R two k where k. Is 8 pi g and plus s of the matter, the integral of d for x squared minus g, and here we have the Lagrangian. This Lagrangian contain, contains the matter fields, of course, the derivatives, and it means, of course, here we should mention that this is covariant derivatives, and that's meaning that we will contain the metric text. Now, if we want to find Einstein equations, we should take the variation of this S metric with respect to the metric tensor. And of course, that's what we call study. We can see that there is no derivatives of the metric. Uh, so, so here, here actually, as I mentioned, that we should take, to find the Einstein equation, should take the uh, Variation of this action with respect to gene minimum. I took it the variation, I didn't give it the concept of the derivatives because, of course, this is functional, it's not function because we used the variation. We use this one now. Uh, taking the variation of asymmetry, it means that we should take the variation of the square root of minus g, and here we have r plus the variation of let's say uh, this element. With respect to G. 
Now about this stress term, that's the this, variation. That should be the variation of here we have uh, P minus V, and here we have R plus square root of minus G and the variation of R. And we should remember that R rich scalar is built from uh, rich tensor, G mu nu, R mu nu. So here, that's what we hear that fact. If we have G mu nu plus the square root of minus G, R, the variation of G mu. Now about, about these, oops, the variation of G mu nu equals to minus one over two square root of minus G, G mu nu. And you have delta of this G mu nu, delta G mu goes to follow the same notation. So here we will take the variation with the upper index. Just I want to follow the same notation of uh, the lecture now. Okay, so we have like this term. Now about the variation of this term, The variation of uh, oops yes here we have R mu and here the variation of G mu R mu about the variation of R mu that uh, will be given of course we can find this one in any lecture no? so no need if, we, if I want to co conclude this one from the scratch it means that that will take a long time and we will was the main idea that's and the main idea that's about the FR theory is not about the basics of the general relativity. So here uh, that's equal to nabla mu, the variation of sigma mu sigma. This is Christopher symbols or the fine connection sigma delta sigma. Mm -hmm. Now this one, this Christopher symbols contain G mu mu and contain the derivative of uh, the derivatives of g mu nu with respect to the time. And we should be careful about, about this idea. Let me just talk a little bit about this one. That's here, we have nabla nu of this term, but we have also the integral. So when we want to take the variation of this action, we shouldn't forget that we would have the integral. So we have the integral of d for x, square root of minus g is coming from here. And we have this nabla nu, and here we have the variation, etc. So. so now now we can use Gauss theorem to convert this integral from uh, hyper volume to hyper surface. And uh, now we can cancel, like if we can cancel this nabla. Then we have the variation of this gamma. And this gamma actually contains now the integral on surface, closed surface. And for this delta gamma, this delta gamma actually will contains g mu nu and the derivatives of g mu. Now, in, uh, according to the differential geometry, if we have closed manifold we have closed closed manifold then in this closed manifold the integral on hypersurface of g mu will equals zero and the integral of the derivative of g mu will equals also and here the variation, the variation of g mu nu will equal to zero. Now, what's the meaning of this? It means that the last term will be uh, will be cancelled, will be zero, because of closed manifold. The last term will be zero, 
and let's check if something looks good. That's I lost the mouse and now I should be okay. So this is equals the integral is equal to zero. And here what we have here and then the as I mentioned that are equal to zero. So now let's see what we have if we take this into account. That's here. We have uh, from the first term, this one, we have negative 1 over 2 square root of minus g, g mu nu, and we have here the integral. Oops, let me write something. So we have the integral of d4x, then we have, uh, we have square root of minus g and we have 1 over 2 g mu nu and we have delta g mu nu I'll write it at the end multiply by r from the second term we have the third term I'm sorry we have the square root of minus g it's here and we have plus r mu nu and we have delta g mu nu I'll write it at the end plus there. and we have this, this term here the second one equals zero so we have only this. Now plus, don't forget that we have here, the changing, let's say that we have here one over two K. We have the integral of, uh, or we have SM. But now we have the variation of SM with respect to G mu nu, because here we have delta G mu nu, and here we have delta G mu so like this. Yes, like this. Now what we can conclude from this one that here we have what we can find from here that's uh, 1 over 2 k the square root of minus g and here we have r mu nu minus 1 over 2 g mu nu plus uh, the variation of s matter with respect to g mu nu that's what equals 0. Now this one r mu nu minus 1 over 2 g mu nu r equals let's say that uh, here we have minus so uh, no we don't have minus and here we have delta s m over delta g mu nu, we have 2k over the square root of minus g, so if we call this one, this term as t mu nu, now we get Einstein equations, where this one is g mu nu, and this one is uh, t mu nu, and we have over here also 8yg, etc. By the way, here I consider that c equals 1, but naturally. So this is the way of deriving Einstein equations by starting from the action, Herbert Einstein actions, and we reach to Einstein action. But now before going to further topics, I want just to mention something important. It's about one of the assumptions within the GR. That's why we were, we were working, we took that in case of the closed manifold where the integral on the hypersurface of the variation of g mu nu equals zero for the closed manifold. And the integral on the surface for the variation of mu g mu nu, also that's equal to zero. Another question, what if the case it's not like this, what if it's not closed manifold? What if we have some kind of non minimal coupling between some degrees of freedom and uh, the, uh, the, the geometry itself? In this case, actually, the second condition, this one, it's no longer satisfied. 
what the meaning of this is mean that we cannot take consider that this one g mu equals zero is it equal zero for example when we want to study the entropy inside the black hole this situation is no longer satisfied when we want to quantum gravity also we cannot take this one into account and actually if we have no minimal coupling between the scalar degrees of freedom and the rich scalar direct uh, coupling between them also we cannot take this is as equal zero so but now what the meaning of this because now for example we want to study the inside of the black holes now we have some kind of problem what this problem is the problem is the problem is that's okay we say that's uh, ancient equation is good we want to keep them but now at the same time we say that this uh, this term it's no longer valid valid so the action of the metric if we start by the action of the metric as uh, for Helbert Einstein plus S of the matter if we didn't take this into account that will not give us g mu nu equals 8 by g t mu nu because you know to reach from to this um, results from this one we impose this condition or this assumption now when we say that this assumption is no longer valid so what the meaning of this means that if we start from this action we cannot reach to this action but actually we need to keep this equation because then we say we mentioned that this equation are well done and they are have they have brilliant results so how we can solve this one actually this is solved by adding term to the action and this term is called the Gibbons, I think your hockey boundary there. So if I here this term G Y H, what this term? This term will cancel just to cancel this one. This term to cancel this one. And the importance of this term, as I mentioned, when we want to study like this, the black holes when we have that uh, non-minimal complete. And yes, in that time we need to add this term. And if we add this term, then the equations or the metric will cover the Einstein equations and then the problem is solved. Now the importance about this point that in case of FR theories, and you will see that later, even if we add like this term, we cannot cover this, uh, this results. Training. We cannot cancel the effect of this of non-zero term, this boundary term. Then uh, we should take into account, we are forced to take into account uh, the variation of R mu nu. And in that case, uh, about uh, this one, the variation of R, we cannot take it as only as R mu nu. Also, we should add uh, some kind of these terms, nabla mu, nabla nu, plus here, laplacia. Yes, G mu nu, Laplacian. And why would we have like this type of the second order derivatives? Because remember that this term, this term, which is not valid, it means that uh, the variation of R mu nu will be exist. And R mu nu, it's nabla nu. And here we have uh, the variation of gamma. This one contains the first derivatives for the, with the metric. And here the other derivatives, so we will get the second derivative of the metric, and that's what we are raised at this. We'll see this later, but I just want to mention about this one. And actually, it's important because it's not only about, you know, understanding the main uh, framework. That's the basic, but if you want to go deep in the general relativity, you should care about the assumption of the general relativity. I can discuss about the, valid, about the, the uh, possibility or that these terms are not valid and uh, what will happen if these assumptions it's uh, not working if you have different space, different ideas that's what help you to you know, go to further other topics in general okay so now again let me summarize the idea until now and let's summarize let's suppose that you are working in uh, the closed manifold and if, uh, 
of ground theory. So just as quick summarization, that's for, for general, general relativity, we started from the action asymmetric equals to A of uh, L, L by the Einstein action plus A of the matter. And from this one, by taking the variation of the A of the metric with respect to the uh, metric, we found Einstein equations, G mu nu equals T mu, related to T mu. Okay. Now, before going to FR theories, also I will mention something about why do did we call it S-metric? Actually, we call it S-metric because there is more than one formalism of the, of the general relativity. The first formalism is called as metric formalism. We mean by metric formalism if that's we, we as I mentioned that's ace of Albert Einstein contains rich scale. Now anyone who worked in or who took um, first course in general, you know that there is here assumption that this rich scale is a function of G. By this assumption, it works well for the geometrical interpretation and to relate the church scalar and uh, with the geometry. But actually, uh, uh, I'm sorry, here I make a mistake. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Our rich scalar contains the Christopher symbols. And the Christopher symbols, actually, there is assumption that this Christopher symbols are related to G. But we have another possibility that these Christopher symbols are independent of G. There is assumption, and as I mentioned, that this assumption gives us a physical and accepted, accepted uh, interpretation uh, to relate this gamma mu nu as uh, uh, to the geometry. But actually, we have another possibility that's take to consider that if this gamma nu and g nu are independent parameters. In this case, when you want to take the variation of the action and to get the correct equation, you should take the variation of the action with respect to g nu and with respect to r, uh, to gamma nu sigma. And this formalism is known as Balatine formalism. Usually within the framework of general relativity, we deal always with the metric formalism. No one will deal with the Balatine formalism. And the reason behind this is that these two, the results of these two formalism, they are equivalent. Are equivalent. So, there, so there is no difference between the results uh, coming from the Balatini formalism or the metric formalism. But when it comes to FR theories, there is difference. There is big differences between the Balatini formalism of our FR theories and the metric formalism of our FR theories. So we need to take this Balatini formalism also into account. Of course, within this lecture, I'll focus on only on the metric formalism. In the future lecture, when I want to talk about the Balatini formalism in general, I will talk about the FR theories, or the FR phi theories, or FR T theories, about the Balatini formalism of all the theories together. But now I just want to uh, talk about the FR theories in the metric format. Also, by the way, there is another, the third formalism, it's called phi metric formalism. Well, this formalism, because actually here in the Palatini formalism, they took that the ace of the gravity or the geometry is dependent on g mu nu and gamma mu nu sigma, but they assume that the matter, they are independent on gamma mu nu, only contains or dependent to g mu nu. And this is actually assumption. Fine metric formalism, they say no. What is also the same is dependent for both G mu nu and gamma nu. So working with a different formalism, it, according to our theories, will give us different uh, results. 
Again, within this series of lectures, I'm going to talk only about the FR theories of the graph. Okay, now let me see something quickly here. Okay. Okay, I'll just try to say what the time for now because I want this lecture to be one hour, not more than. I'm, I'm sure that we still have time, but I'm trying to find. Let me stop sharing. Maybe that's what you ask. Something about the time. See that's a command of time. Anyway, let's let's back to our lecture. Okay, now now so let's look now at FR theories of the gravity. And how we can conclude. Modify Einstein equations in uh, of uh, FR theories. Okay, now in FR theory, sorry, FR, the action, let me be scalar, the action of the metric equals to. S F I would call it for now plus S. So S of the metric will be the inter one over two k the integral of d four x square root of minus g. Uh, and here we have F R plus S of the matter. I'll focus on this part because this one will give us the thing you know. So the variation of square root of minus g is r. That will give us again f r. The variation of square root of minus g plus the square root of minus g. The variation of course with respect to g. This one will give us negative one over two. Uh, the square root of minus g. G mu nu, G mu nu, and here we have F R plus the square root of minus G. Now this one here, uh, we will take it as following. So the variation of F R, we will take it as the variation of the derivative. The derivative of fr with respect to r, and here we have the variation of r with respect to g mu nu, and here we have delta g. Now let's remember that here, in case of fr theories, actually, as I mentioned, the closed manifold is not satisfied. And even, even if we add uh, the Gibbons, your cooking boundary term, it's not working. We cannot cancel the effect of non matching boundary term. So now the variation of R, now it's given by the following. Uh, it's given by uh, R mu nu minus nabla mu, nabla nu plus G mu nu plus shake quickly.
So we have R mu nu. Yeah, this is minus, and that's what's yeah, that's good. So here now we have the following. That's you have uh, R mu nu minus nabla mu nabla nu plus G mu nu Laplacian applied on this F. I'll write as F prime R. We mean by prime as uh, the derivative with respect to. And it's okay. So now we have this equation about this part. Now we can conclude that uh, we erase all of this. So now by working with this, this that will give us that. So here again, here we have R mu nu minus one over two G mu nu R equals eight by G mu. While here, what we have when we have a metric equals zero, that's what we have the following: that's F prime R R mu nu with I took this term. And minus one over two instead of R, here we have now G mu nu FR, but we have the rest of the term that's D mu D mu minus G mu nu Laplacian F prime R, and that equals let's say eight by G D. So now this is what we have from the modified gravity. So this is now it's a modified Einstein equation. Now let's look a little bit about some constraint on this function f r. To understand this, let's take the trace of Einstein equation. You know that trace of Einstein equation, so let's multiply here by G mu nu. So G mu nu with, G, with, R, with R mu nu, it's R. And here we have G mu nu with G mu nu, this is 4. We have over 2, so this is 2, so we have R minus 2R, and this is negative R, equals 8 by G. And here we have E mu nu with G mu nu is T, the trace of the momentum in a Newton. So we can see that the relation between R and T, they are uh, algebraic one. And in case of T equals zero, then we have R equals zero. And this is maximally symmetric, uh, maximally uh, symmetric space time with Minkowski structure because R equals zero. If we have an empty space with any kind of energy, then we have this maximally symmetric solution with Minkowski uh, structure. Now, let's take here the trace and let's see what the result. So the same thing, if you multiply here, we have F prime R, and here we have R, and then we have minus one over two, or it will be four or two minus two. Two F R. And here we have G mu nu. It means that this will be Laplacian. And here we have G mu nu with G mu nu. It means that we have four. So we have Laplacian minus four Laplacian. That would be uh, negative three Laplacian with negative sign. Uh, out of the bracket, so that would be plus three Laplacian F prime R, and here we have eight by G T. But now, of course, so the main difference or the first difference between these two equations is that here we have algebraic relation between R and T, but we really have differential relation because we have the Laplacian. 
Now, let's see what about the case if we took that, uh, or, 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 or in a different way, we should uh, keep the results that if t equals zero, you know, it's not necessary that r equals zero. Maybe we can say that's okay, r equals c. Then, if this c equals zero, we are with Minkowski state. If it's positive, we have the d sitter solution. If we have negative, then we have anti d sitter solution. So let's see now that's what, we, what the constraint on this equation will be if we took t equals zero and r equals c. So here with the right hand side, that would be zero. And for the left hand side, if, if r is constant, so that uh, the Laplacian of the fr, of course, will be zero. So we have that's f prime r, r minus two fr should satisfy that this is equal to zero. So this is constant on this equation should satisfy this constant, this condition. Okay, now, uh, finally, at the end of this lecture, I just want to, to write this equation in some similar way to be similar to Einstein equations. Now, to do this, Let's uh, try to find similar term for Einstein term. So in, in Einstein we have R mu nu, and here we have R mu nu. So, but here we have negative one over two G mu nu R. So let's add to this side and add and subtract negative uh, one over two G mu nu R, and of course it will prime R. So now we have R mu nu minus one over two g nu nu r. And of course, all of them here multiplied by f prime r. And let's remove the whole terms to the other side. So here we have, let's say kappa t nu nu. And if we remove the from here, the f prime r, and divide this one by f prime r, plus, we have g mu nu f r over 2 f prime r because we divide the both of all sides by f prime r now minus we add r f r here subtract r if r, r, r if prime r so we add r if prime r if we shift it to the second term that will be r if prime r and because there is two and f prime r and both of the engineering rules so i wrote them together with f r but here we subtract so we add to the second sign that will be the sign that's what we need. Plus, we still have uh, nabla mu, nabla mu, f prime r minus g mu nu laplacian f prime r over f prime And this is actually, is that it's going to be written as g mu nu equals kappa over f prime r of T mu nu plus T mu nu effective. What is T mu nu effective? It's by definition F R minus R F prime R over to G mu nu plus nabla mu nabla mu F prime minus G mu nu Laplacian F prime. So now in this way, we wrote the FR modified Einstein equation, uh, equations as, uh, in similar way as 
Einstein curvature or Einstein uh, tensor equals to momentum, energy tensor plus an effective one. And of course, they are divided by F prime. Thank you for your listening. I hope that you find this uh, lecture helpful and interesting. Uh, what I, what uh, I want to mention finally that this conclusion and mathematics, all of them, they are mainly is uh, depending on this reference, also on FR theories of gravity. So you can find everything here. Uh, this lecture actually, and uh, I expect that the next lecture also will be about the mathematical structure of the uh, about the mathematical structure of the FR theories of the gravity. But later on, we will work on the physical aspects about the FR theories. We will see how the physicists, or how we, we will review a few papers about how we can compare and use the advanced computations to compare the theoretical predictions with the uh, experimental one and also we will review we will check a few papers about the uh, inflation and the relation between the inflation and the fr theories because as i mentioned at the beginning of this lecture inflation itself can be explained by uh, using this fr theories without any needs to uh, scalar uh, scalar field now next lecture um, we will talk about the conformal transformation and how we can bring or transform the action, this action and the equations of uh, Einstein from one frame to another. So they will seem as if they are uh, so similar to Einstein equations, but with fifth force, something like that, fifth force. In our case, Actually, we will add uh, degrees, scalar degrees of freedom, like if we have a scalar field, and we will check the validity and the meaning of this. And in the third lecture, we will talk about the cosmological predictions, the cosmological uh, results of FR theory. I will review the uh, Einstein treatment or, or the, the I will view how we deal with the cosmology according to Einstein gravity. Then we'll see what the difference between the cosmological results if we took the, 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 the gravity according to Einstein or according to FR theories. That, that, that will be the topic of the third lecture. And then the fourth lecture, we, I, as I mentioned, I will review the, some papers. And finally, we will check the inflation and with FR theories. For now, I have nothing to add. Have a nice day. Thank you again for your listening. And see you next section.